And this is a situation where if that same exact case of the three-level snowball kind of going in favor of Team Freedom, I expect them to lock out that game with the three-level lead in the same manner. Tomb, it's a little bit harder at moments, uh, you know, especially I feel like in North America on what objectives to be pushing when. But Sky Temple, it's pretty clear cut. Yeah, um, honestly, I would not be happy with last game if I was Team Freedom. I, I thought there was a lot of mistakes. You know, a team of their caliber should not be letting a three-level lead drop just like that, nor should they be getting three-man CC'd in the late game like that. So I'd be, if I was Team Freedom, I, I would say they're not happy with their performance that game, and they're looking for a cleaner one here. That's a fast Medivh, man. Uh, fan, you guys obviously uh, played very well against Team Freedom on this battleground in particular, without giving up too much, I guess. When you guys study them, obviously you're looking at maps like Infernal and things like Sky. What are things that you're trying to potentially deny or maybe force Team Freedom into when you get them on this battleground? Yeah, Team Freedom generally is a more of a linear team. They they will run the same drafts over and over on certain battlegrounds. I don't want to like reveal their drafts or anything like that, but I think Gale Force from Scrims pretty much knows certain heroes that Freedom likes to run, and as long as they deny those key heroes, uh, they should be good for the running. Well, last time these teams faced off, we had the Malfurion, I believe, on the side of Team Freedom. Uh, but they also had the Tracer that game, and things played around a lot of that. The Global, obviously, was another uh, high priority when we got the Dahaka out. So we'll see if maybe history repeats itself. Yeah, we got the, on that same kind of notebook, uh, we got Gale Force was comfortable Big E, you know, in the first series here today, willing to bust out the Tracer, and it looked pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, for me, he has been one of the few Tracer players in North America that I go, you are, are a Tracer player. Like, you are really, really good, high impact on the hero very, very consistently, though it isn't his kind of go-to as of late, so I wouldn't mind if we got that from them. In terms of the one-two here from Team Freedom, normally this is where we go, you know, is this the Garrosh Stukov, Garrosh whatever? They end up going the Stukov and the Hanzo, not the same priority onto the front line. Understandably so there. Team Freedom, they have Though the support's priority seems like they agree Stukov should be higher than they've had in the past, their frontline and their support priority has been very different than we see in the rest of North America. The Stukov, though, just has been so, so at the top of the priority list for collusion since that clash. I mean, you, you, I guess they definitely picked something up, you know, from there, and they haven't let it go. Yeah, I mean, for most for most teams, even after Shad showcased the Stukov, everyone went home from every region and started <laughs> practicing it nonstop. I mean, some people have lowered their priorities on it since then, but uh, Team Freedom definitely really liking it still. Feels like one of the best answers to Stukov is just to flank him, you know, instead of diving right into him, right? Obviously, it makes it difficult with the lurking arm down there. We've seen a lot of Genji and Tracer be good counters towards Stukov, you know, over the last little while, which brings up, will we potentially get Biggie on a Genji? Will we get him on the potential Tracer? Or will we get the Gale Force Classic here with the Jaina? Seems likely. Malfury and Jaina Garrosh here, the trio for Gale Force Esports. On Sky Temple, how do you feel about how do you feel about Garrosh on Sky Temple? I have moments where I go like, oh, it's a map where you can skirmish long periods of time, he's gonna get a lot of value of his armor, but I also go he's like a fish in the barrel and I can kite him around the point very, very easily. Yeah, I, I think it depends a lot on the Garrosh player. There's Garrosh players that will approach you directly and you can just kind of kite them. But the more he plays around bushes, and there are actually quite a few bushes you can play around on Sky Temple, the more effective it becomes. So I'm not opposed to that pick on Sky Temple. However, I do think Hanzo is a very good matchup into both Garrosh and Jaina just because he outranges both of them. So we're going to have to see, you know, how much Fury can play the bushes and just kind of play vision and hopefully get to the, the back line of Team Freedom versus how much Hanzo can be poking him. Just kind of curious where we'll get Yoda this game is. Genji's being hovered as a ban there, and I think justifiably so. Now, I know I mentioned Dahaka, but if I'm on the side of Team Freedom, ooh, and I'm worried. Now, this seems like Dahaka, but if I'm worried about a potential Tracer, then I think Blaze for me, steps up a little bit in priority over the Dahaka, but looks like they might be playing around the Globals. I'm a fan of Blaze, I feel like, from beginning to end on that. Uh, I personally feel like just Blaze's impact in the game is just, compared to the Dahaka, even though you do have the Global, if you aren't gonna gain value out of the early stages of the game in the Global on that sense, then always gonna be a support of that. I'm really curious about what Zugrug's pick is going to be here. I was watching him pretty closely last game on Diablo, and while he made some really good plays at the end there, a lot of his early game plays, he was not really lining up the walls. Um, he was doing like QEQ just in the middle of the air on low priority targets, so it didn't really look like his Diablo play was too 
you know, amazing that game at least. So kind of want, want to see what they put him on this game, especially when the enemy team has Garrosh and Garrosh can threaten the front line so well. I agree with you. Even in, at some of the moments, he did have high impact moments even in the later stages, but there were a couple moments where it's like, oh, that's in the middle of the lane, you know, not getting the kind of crowd control necessary. Sadly, not going to see it yet. Still a big question mark there for the front line of Team Freedom, but we do get that to Haka along with the Grey Main. A lot of auto attack damage coming out from Team Freedom. Bring that Cassia back. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was like, uh, you know, is this a Cassia moment here, Gale Force? Again, against this team, Grey Main does pretty well to counter Tracer. Obviously, going the extra auto attack range. And your human form at level 7 does really well. Tahaka can pulse bomb. Grey Main goes into Worgen form, gets armor. Uh, obviously, Stukov, Hanzo a little bit more vulnerable. Uh, but again, I think the Cassia does come to mind here. Um, yeah, honestly, the Cassia looks pretty good to me. We'll, we'll have to see if they do end up going with that, though. They could also go with something like, uh, oh, actually, Genji's ban. They could go with the Tracer, but honestly, I think the Cassia looks a lot better than the Tracer here. The only problem with that is your offlane has to be a warrior, I feel like, at that point. So it forces you into the blaze rather than, like, maybe if you wanted to throw for any reason. And debatably, is that a problem? I don't know. I, I don't think so, because I, again, I'm a huge Blaze fan, uh, but they, we end up getting the Cassie, and we got ourselves a Blaze there from Gale Force Esports. So now we got to figure out what is it going to be for Zugrun. I wonder if it might just go the Muradin realm. Uh, it's something he occasionally ventures down. I mean, you look ETC obviously available. It seems like a, a more likely scenario, but when you look at Zugrug, Muradin sometimes come through. It comes through in this area. Does have the mobility if Garrosh tosses you in. This is not an easy pick at all because not only do you have to worry about the Garrosh Malfurion and surviving that combination, but Jaina in particular is actually really annoying for a lot of the tanks too, just because uh, like if you're ETC or if you're Johanna, if Jaina gets the slow on you, you're never getting out. So it's a very it's a very hard pick to decide on. As we can see, they're waiting until the last second as well. We got down tier a lot. Uh, or I'm still saying maybe a stitches. We go with the Murden route. I'll be honest, out of all the wild cards we pick out, I, I, I'm, I'm not sold on the Murden selection. I'm more sold on the Murden. Than a Johanna. Than a Johanna. I agree, but that's about as far Tyrael, as the list goes. Tyrael might be up there, ETC, but I feel like given the circumstance, if you get thrown in, I think Murden, especially post 13, you get tossed in, just hit that R button, hit a little bit of W action, get that healing static, get that double clap on the backside. It feels like it could be a situation where it's like, look, if I can't make it out of here, at least I know I can survive a little bit longer than maybe some of the other heroes. So, and again, it's Zugrug on that front line stacking. Murden's there. Murden also has block if you want to go against the Cassia, obviously depending on what Cassia picks up. So has a couple of options. This is a game where draft-wise, I actually like a lot of what we saw from Gale Force Esports when it comes to the picks. We still got that kind of Cassia at the later stages from them. They have a lot of threat. It's just, we saw the early game of the last game. If that goes anywhere of the like over to Team Freedom on something that they're a map they're more comfortable on and one that you can keep that lead, I just go, I just don't know if Gale Force can even keep it on even footing long enough to make yeah. that happen. And I don't consider that compositionally. That's just, you know, purely in-game play based on what we saw in the first 10 minutes of the last one. Now, Team Freedom, once they get control on a map like this, fan, pretty hard to come back. Yeah, they're going to need control too. I mean, that's the one thing their draft has going for them. They have insane Merc pressure with Hanzo and Grameen and Dahaka, so they need to win the map because they're not winning the fight. All right, well, let's see if they have what it takes here. Who is going to end up winning that battleground and who's going to be winning over the skirmishes here? Game two on Sky Temple. The old Murden springs up every now and again. We're going to see how it plays out here again. Having Lutano on the Hanzo Dreadnought, 22 games of Hanzo, probably about 40% of his games played. Definitely a hero he is very well practiced on. It's just, it's, you know, it's uh, one of his favorites, really. You know, I'm trying to figure out if there's a, any other hero that is a Lutano type hero that I would like to see him maybe learn in the arsenal here that we could drop on broadcast and hopefully he starts flexing it out. But I feel like he has most of the quote unquote, you know, kind of cool heroes for the most part. I really thought block might be there. If not, third win seems likely. I did not expect stacking hammer build especially on a map where I like it, right? I think there's a very good place for it, but this is a map where your skirmishes that we were just talking about, they're not as frequent. Oh, my route. That's a killer route. Yeah, no flip or anything like there, or at least follow-up CC coming out from Gale Force here. But, uh, but I, 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 I agree with you. I thought we would see more defensives. 
I'll be honest, I like that this build is becoming a little bit more popular. I think that Muradin struggles enough in the world of survivability. We've been talking about the post-13, you know, with the healing static and what that brings to light. But it's also, even if you get to the 13th threshold, that is not a reliable heal. You're relying on your opponent to make a mistake. A pretty big one at that for how long that talent has been around and that playstyle has been around. And again, how clear the team fight is going to be on the side of freedom. Or Gale Force, you flip over, don't all stack on top of the Muradin. We get the kill, he has no heal. So, you know, I like that we see him make up for that in other areas. If you aren't going to make up in survivability, what can you do? Make up for it in crowd control? Well, sadly, you can't increase your crowd control. Give him the hammer and then give him the axe at level 7. Exactly. In some way, <laughs> shape, or form, be able to make up for it. And uh, his level 1s, I, I think that's a great place to be able to start. That in mind, that doesn't mean I support full warrior, you know, damage warrior version of Murden. Like, if we get a haymaker, no defensives, I'm I'm definitely going to have qualms. <laughs> I, I, I personally think Ooh, that an Aptar is going to be a must. No, no, no. You get tossed in by Garrosh. You're like, oh, you toss me? I'm yeah. going to give him the... That's the thing, though, is he has infinite armor, and the more damage you put into him, the harder he is to kill, and the Murden just goes, but I'm still a dwarf. It doesn't matter how much, you know, butt I can kick there. You end up going down. Cursed bullet, you think, coming in here for Greymane to try and deal with that? Maybe against the Garrosh? Yes, and especially considering the fact that we Cassia is pretty tanky. Uh, Malfurion would be the only other go for the throat target that would even exist if you manage to make it past the double front line. That is uh, the Dahaka talent that I, I don't see that often, where you get the essence off takedowns. Yeah. That is not something that I see too often. That requires you to get takedowns, you know. Although, hold on, is this the changed version? This is the changed version. Yeah, it increases yes. the essence gained by takedowns by 100%. And then hitting an enemy with your Dark Swarm gives you an essence. But your Dark Swarm, much like we were talking about with Tassadar earlier and the clear on a, you know, a cocoon, it hits real fast. And you can stack that. I really wonder. Now, it seems that Feeding Frenzy, because every time you auto attack, it reduces the cooldown on your drag. There's a root, though. Taking a lot of damage is going to be that Cassia. But... At level seven, you have Feeding Frenzy, really strong. And it's that every time you auto-attack, you get the cooldown on your drag. However, there is the talent there, the cooldown reduction on your Dark Swarm. And I really wonder, it's been a long time since we've seen that. I think the changes to Dahaka around April, May of last year kind of changed up quite a bit. And a lot of te teams started going Feeding Frenzy because of that control. But I wonder if this is a game where we get to see it. This is a new change to Dahaka. Speaking of Dahaka, if we do see that change on that, we have to see the Shred at 13. Like, you have oh, yeah. to see the Shred at 13. But then that's, like, near 100% AoE, like, uptime uh, Shred of, you know, armor on your opponent's side of the battlefield. The damage amplification is going to be very, very real. It really is kind of reverting back to the original version of Dahaka, if you will. Yeah, that was, again, a level, what is it? Is it 15, 10 armor reduction now? I believe it's, it's a 10 It's changed right now. quite a bit. Yeah, I got nerfed multiple times. Yeah, so it is still going to be feeding Frenzy. So still into that drag, but definitely still getting the essence on that stack. A lot of players, especially on larger battlegrounds, Dredd, I've talked to a few people about this talent in particular. It seems like a lot of people have the general consensus that despite you getting that, most of your time spent is going to be in the lanes, and you'd rather come in fully stacked instead of, you know, gaining those stacks in the middle of a team fight. But maybe we see something different here from Nazareth. Sugrug so should have the Dwarf Toss available. We'll end up having it, making it out from that bit of a tussle here up in the top half of the map. But for now, Mikey Dahl doing a pretty good job on the bottom lane, prepping up the team, getting that Siege out onto this. The biggest thing is about those Giants and about the Knights and who makes the proper rotation kind of between the two to best set up the team. Team Freedom, because they have a global advantage, should be looking to make sure that they get their Night Camp, you know, a lot of value. But in the fact that we got ourselves a ways out before it to spawn here, another minute and a half, until it's going to be up, but the Hawk has already made the rotation top. You know, Dreadnought, one of the players that I was able to talk with was actually uh, one of our open division players who plays the off lane, who's headed to the Crucible, trying to make his way into the HGC. A guy by the name of Zergling, who's looking like an up and comer potentially for HGC in the future. He was one of the people I asked about that talent in particular. He still thinks the old classic feeding frenzies there, and it seems like Yoda does too, but level four, obviously, the, or excuse me, Nasmus, but obviously a level four changeup. So curious if uh, he's watching, taking notes to see how it works right now. Giants got cleared up pretty easily here for Team Freedom on the bottom half of the map. Got 30 seconds out from those shots again. It does look like the night camp actually, in fact, was time kind of, you know, 
off enough from the first shrine phase to where it won't be an option to be feared. And that's something that Gale Force has got to be thankful for, not dealing with the night camp in the top half of the map while this spawns and a global advantage. That mind, though, eventually B, B Kid has to be concerned and make the transition down. But Gale Force slightly winning on the race to 10. Though normally we don't talk about like micro, you know, winning on races like this. On the spike to 10 in early game levels, this type of stuff actually does matter because that is the difference from one to two to three minions. And that really can be the difference from a death as early as this. But, you know, nothing going to be gained here. Just a lot of shots in the bottom half while Freedom cycle the pressure towards mid. And this is one of the best things to do. If you have a gray main on your team and you can just cycle out, you saw them rip through that, use that inner beast, hop into that worgen form if needed, but you can see they can just trade out structures just as easily when they go out. Nazmus gonna force a response to the top lane. If B Kid shows there, look for Nazmus to potentially go ahead and head bottom, but it looks like the rest of Team Freedom, they're just gonna go ahead and concede this bottom temple. They got a little bit of damage done mid. They got the entire fort top, the, the remnants of that. So an interesting trade off here for Team Freedom. Yeah, Gale Force technically is sitting there structurally with an advantage, experience-wise with an advantage. Do you remember how Sky Temple, when it originally came out, this was the battleground that we all looked at, and we were like, this is where this is where the fight happens, you know? I'm sick of this cursed hollow dancing around, not doing anything the whole time. I want some action. Let's bring out the Sky Temple. And now it's like, we can go two to three rotations deep, and we'll be like, we haven't seen a single kill. We barely even looked at each other, for that matter. It has just been all about <laughs> the minions and the shots. You know, and I mentioned that with the level one Murden talent, sitting at eight stacks, hasn't amounted to a kill, obviously, so you don't, no bonus stacks, obviously, off that, towards the baseline quest where you get the pierce, and obviously eight just towards the talent itself. We see the three-man commitment in the top lane, four-man for that matter, hold up here. It's a party in the top lane, ladies and gentlemen. Well, he dropped. Murden is a bit split there, but not able to hit the slow. Big impact there. It's going to set them back. The Welly will find Nazmus to be able to slow that down, but all the damage from Lutano and Yoda make easy work of that water elemental. Yo, know, we mentioned the fact that sometimes there's not those big skirmishes, Dreadnought, but it is top bottom temple coming up next. The global Ooh. on the side of Team Freedom. Generally like, all right, double temple. Will we see the trade? The boss obviously is a big consideration for a lot of teams. And it's one of those things that you need that priority over that bottom lane. And if you end up losing that, you potentially give up the boss as well. So particularly interesting calls potentially coming up here uh, between these two teams. So excited to see how they handle this. This is always like my favorite like paradox of, do I stay top, do I stay bottom? Do I try and do this? Uh, well, it's gonna be a little bit easier if they get a kill here. It's definitely, I would say probably in the world of Sky Temple, probably close to one of my favorite ones. Definitely not my favorite. My favorite actually is just Giants and Knights. Phase one into two. That is the best part about this entire map and how well you play that out. I feel like it's, uh, obviously that's personal opinion, not objective fact, ladies and gentlemen. You can have your favorite part of Sky Temple. Uh, but uh, shots now gonna be picked up here for Gale Force in the bottom half. We've been talking about, you know, the boss threat, but because they have the global on the dock up towards top, it's not going to be too big of a concern for freedom. If they trade, Gale Force still is ahead. Well, the one thing that they were trying to do here, obviously, was if they could get some damage onto the fort, then the, the temple up top would start to rotate towards the bottom a little bit quicker. They weren't able to get there, but they are going to rotate down. Is Team Freedom. This could be the fight that we're looking for. Sonic Arrow goes out, trying to keep track of vision. Tahaka, once he finishes that temple, see if he makes the, the movement down. But right now, it looks like Team Freedom, they're just going to hop on out. Really good job there by Fury. Uh, just understanding that that rotation was going to be coming down from Team Freedom. You saw the scattering arrow, and then he positioned himself not only with the you know shortest distance to safety, but then also kind of fluttering back and forth to make sure never losing the advantage over those shots, and then pulling out as fast as possible. It's not you know mind-boggling, but when we don't have any skirmishes unfolding, those kind of small decisions to make sure that you min-max all of the things capable, your positioning and everything like are going to matter. Fury's doing his best for the squad. Pressure up on the top half demands respect there from Blaze as Gale Force sends Blaze to deal with that. But the boss still going to be kind of just sharked and hovered around between the two teams. Freedom maybe looking to get that damage on this bottom fort, restore the balance and structures. 
Uh, you know, we were wondering, obviously contemplating going into that Dark Swarm build. It didn't go in at 7, but did end up going the armor reduction at 13, so potentially amplifying some of that damage coming in, especially if Yoda hops in in that Worgen form and starts ripping people apart with that armor reduction. They get the setup potentially with Stukov, so we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, you know, we see Fury changing up his build just a little bit, obviously not going the Groundbreaker talent at 1, generally synergizes with the one at 13, instead going double up, making sure to double up that armor at any given moment, which... Maybe necessary now. The stalemate around that boss is <laughs> so funny. You just see a Garrosh Bro, and a Siding, Can we portrait? see the boss for a moment? Thank you. I just want to know, is anybody going to, you know, because it's not like there's anything else happening on the map. I just wanted to know, while the action was happening, if anybody would want to poke and prod that little sand beast. You ever see the hero's gif? with uh, Tychus and Raynor. One of them pops up, shoots over the wall, and he ducks down, then the other one pops up and it, shoots over the wall. I can imagine it, and I feel like this, yeah, you nailed it here. That is exactly what this situation looks like. <laughs> well, right now, both teams getting close to 16. Siege Giants being picked up. Knight's gonna be picked up by both teams and cleared out up at the top. Fury gonna buy a little bit, but he might be in trouble. Indomitable's used. Nasmus is gonna land that tongue after all. There's going to be the taunt back. I don't think it's going to be enough. He's living for now somehow. Oh. Tranquility's out. Is it going to be enough? It is. Fury is alive. And now the Welly able to slow things down. Man, I have so much to say about Akaface's decision making from beginning. To wait? Yeah. He, he <laughs> accepted that Garrosh was dead for eight seconds, it felt like, before he decided maybe I could save this. And on, honestly, I thought the same thing. If I was him, I'm like, sorry, uh, boys, this yeah, is not worth the trick. But then he ended up using it. It's a certain point where I just go, I don't know, man. It's not worth the cooldown anymore. But he saves it. The team is fine. They hold their own. And here is the skirmish. 16 still not to be found. Indomitable already dropped. Flip used by Fury as Gale Force Esports looking to move in. Going in, there's going to be the Jet Propulsion getting quite a bit of damage. The trait used. Bunker already dropped down. You can see a lot of damage. Tunneling Claw is going to buy a little bit of space for Nazmus as he's under assault. Does have the Essence. He's going to be healed up and he's going to land the Drag Fury somehow alive again. Oh my Fury. He's kiting out. Is he able to survive? What? No way! He was just in the middle of four members. Team Freedom just go, oh, you know what? All right, well, we're going to let, you know, somehow, some way, Fury able to make it out here. But by no means, you know, even though Freedom didn't get the kill, they still won enough. They won the battle, and that was all that mattered. The shots over the mid, they are now winning structurally on this map. Experience is going kind of towards their favor. But if he dies, does that mean Freedom gets boss because there's no longer that control? I mean... Honestly, I feel like the biggest thing here is the fact that I'm satisfied that our teams were able to maintain the peace treaty a little bit longer through this game, and the fact that we were able to, you know, be able to settle this in peace. You know, it might be a brawler, but it doesn't mean we have to kill, you know? Everybody comes back in the Nexus. That's why we call it takedowns. Including Deckard Kane. Kappa. <laughs> Gale Force, get the they're forced out. Look at Lutano's positioning. Scatter arrow hits Dragon major arrow. chunks. Zuggrug, though, able to get the Dwarf Toss out. Now Nazma's coming in with that brush. Sock isolation used. It's onto the Tranquility, but he's able to make it back into the bunker. Now Nazmus needs to be able to kite out. Fen goes in. He gets the drag. Two-man Jet Propulsion going to lock him down. Fury with the Groundbreaker. Is he going to use it? No, but he gets the flip over. They find the Dahaka, and now with 45 seconds, with no Nazmus, Gale Force Esports get a boss. I, I don't know if that's going to be a replay moment, but if Fan is watching, I want to get his thoughts on the positioning from Lutano. He had the big time flank dread, got the Dragon Zero, but wasn't able to get into position to do damage. Now he's making his way back in here. Zugra getting the stun down. This is a four versus five. Dahaka still nowhere close. The massive, massive shove. shove already used. Now it's going to be a huge opportunity. Fury healing himself up, flips back Zugrug, knowing that's the only member who can defend. But Yoda goes in, goes into Worgen form, gets one, goes for the throw, finds the second. The taunt is there. He's going to swipe over, take Aka face down. Fury trying to get the kite out. Collusion and friends are holding on here to this fight, and they will wipe. Gale Force Esports, five versus four. That is insane what we just saw there, taking that fight. There's the position of Lutano again. Dare I question it, Dreadnought. Those scatter arrows ripped apart the Jaina and the Malfurion on the backside. Now we're looking at double temples. Dahaka is back up. He'll clear up this boss. And they're going to use Greymane again to try and get some early structure damage in before they turn their attention to these temples. That's one of those few moments that I really wish we, you know, you had the play of the game music playing at the exact same time. It was Lutano. How many arrows he was able to hit there. 
going through with that, uh, excuse me, with that Hanzo. It really was make or break. I will say, I think part of the reason that you saw that original positioning was based on they didn't know how low the boss was. He threw the scattering arrow out, and that more often than not, somebody's got to be able to get that flank, and he was the only one who actually had it. So he's like, maybe a backliner, get a little bit low. If I threaten them off, they aren't going to be able to get this boss. They just were like, oh, wait, this boss is almost dead. We have to take this fight this second. It works out here for Team Freedom. And it leads them to be structurally miles ahead now over Gale Force Esports. 20 to 18 now is the damage done in terms of structure wise. Gale Force finds themselves in another hole. We'll see if they can find their way back as Team Freedom, one team fight is all it took. Dread, I don't I don't know if you're aware of this. I just looked at the kill count. That's five. That means all of their kills just came in one team fight, and it couldn't have come at a better yeah, time. That was the only deaths that we've seen this whole game, was everything that we saw there. The one pill kill was on the other side as well from Gale Force Esports. Shots picked up before that third keep falls. Mikey Dahl, I thought, sniffed out Nazbis, but now they're going to try and take advantage of the split of Gale Force Esports here. Fury ends up taking the drag. He's going to fall low there. Michael Udall coming in on the Cassia Zugrug. He's going to be pretty healthy there on the Murd, and Massive Shove's going to push Akaface back, deny some of that healing isolation used on the front line, but it doesn't matter as Yoda is going in. You can hear the growl. He is getting the takedowns. Yes, he died, but it does not matter. He actually went for the upgrade. I was like, that's too many growls. He's like, look, I get a reset. I'm going resets for days. It unleashed. doesn't matter. Yeah, unleash the beast. It doesn't matter. Four members down. Team Freedom. I mean, they could just walk to core. They could go get temple. That will do core damage here in a moment. But I think with four members down, clean ending here. Only two team fights in that game, but both of them very much going dominantly and confidently in favor of Team Freedom. And with that, and in a couple of seconds, once they whittle away at this core HP, they're going to find themselves one game away from being able to send home Gale Force Esports. And more importantly, Moving on to tomorrow, the take on Team Octalysis in the playoffs. Uh, just, you know, the big team fights when it mattered, that's really what it came down to. Team Freedom, you know, we saw Fury, he managed to survive in some of the moments where you can't imagine anybody surviving. Obviously, the double up talent coming in uh, 